Once upon a time, in the ancient time of history, there existed a tribe known as the Vandals. Their story begins in the mists of time, where they first appeared on the pages of Roman chronicles. Pliny the Elder, in his monumental work, The Natural History, mentions them around 77 CE. Another Roman historian, Tacitus, speaks of them in his work Germania, around 98 CE, although he referred to them as the Lugi. The name Vandals possibly meant the Wanderers, a title bestowed upon them by both Pliny and Tacitus, who called them the Vandilii. But over time, the term Vandal evolved to signify wanton destruction, largely due to accounts by Roman writers describing their violent tendencies, notably their infamous sack of Rome in 455 CE. However, some historians, like Torsten Cumberland Jacobson, argue that branding the Vandals as mere destroyers is a simplification. They were just one of many Germanic tribes caught up in the vast movements known as the Wandering of the Nations. This period, spanning roughly from 376 to 476 CE, saw massive migrations driven by various factors, including pressure from the Huns, bringing these tribes into contact with the Roman Empire and other cultures. The Vandals made their mark on history by breaching the Roman frontier around 270 CE, becoming intertwined with Rome until their eventual defeat at the Battle of Tricamerum in North Africa in 534 CE. There, the Vandal King Gelimer met his end at the hands of the Roman general Belisarius, marking the demise of the Vandals as a unified force. The origins of the Vandals are shrouded in mystery. Believed to have originated in Scandinavia, they migrated to the region of Silesia around 130 BCE. Associated with the Iron Age Peshevorsk culture of Poland, their early history is complex and contested. It's uncertain whether Vandal was their original name, as Tacitus referred to them interchangeably as Vandals and Lugi. It's unclear if the Vandals were a dominant tribe with the Lugi as a subgroup, or if both names referred to distinct groups within the tribe. At some point, the Vandals split into factions. The Selingi Vandals remained in Silesia, while the Hastingi migrated south to the Zudaten mountain range. The Hastingi's alliance with Rome during the Marcomannic Wars of 166 to 180 CE proved troublesome, leading to conflicts rather than cooperation. The sources from this era are scarce and conflicting. Some depict the Vandals as allies of Marcus Aurelius, while others paint them as adversaries. Cassius Dio mentions them as farmers in federates of Rome, complicating their early relationship with the Empire. Despite the ambiguity, hostilities between the Vandals and Rome gradually escalated over time. War erupted between the Vandals and Rome around 270 CE as they began raiding Roman territories regularly. Emperor Aurelian, seeking to quell their incursions, clashed with them in 271 CE and emerged victorious. Prior to this conflict, the Vandals had been allies of Rome, even serving in its military alongside the Goths. Aurelian pushed them back across the Danube, marking a turning point in their relationship. Unlike their reputation for violence, the Vandals were primarily farmers, settling in circular villages and river valleys. They cultivated crops, raised livestock, and engaged in trade. Skilled craftsmen, they excelled in weapon smithing, jewelry making, ceramics, and weaving. Governed by a king or possibly two co-rulers, they had a noble class and were renowned for their equestrian prowess, crucial for warfare. Described by ancient sources as tall, blonde, and attractive, the Vandals' martial abilities often overshadowed their domestic life and societal structure. Emperor Probus dealt them significant blows in 278 CE, incorporating survivors into the Roman army and dispatching them to Britain. In 330 CE, Constantine the Great relocated the Vandals to Pannonia, where they coexisted with Romans but clashed over religious beliefs. While Romans embraced Trinitarian Christianity, the Vandals adhered to Arianism. Despite religious tensions, both groups faced a common enemy in the Huns. In 376 CE, as the Goths fled from the Huns, they were welcomed into the Roman Empire, but the Vandals and other tribes were not. The Huns' continued invasions prompted a mass migration of barbarian tribes toward the Roman border. On a fateful winter night in 406 CE, the Vandals crossed the frozen Rhine River and surged into the empire, wreaking havoc in Gaul before settling in Hispania. Conflict persisted with the Franks, Romans and other tribes until circa 420 CE, when the Vandals seized key ports in Hispania, establishing a formidable navy. Under King Gunderic's rule, the Vandals and Alans effectively resisted Roman advances. However, clashes with the Visigoths of Hispania intensified. Gunderic's death in 428 CE 
saw his half-brother Gazric ascend to the throne, ushering in an era of Vandal dominance and Gazric's legacy as one of antiquity's most formidable monarchs. As the Vandals strengthened their grip on Spain, the Roman Empire grappled with internal strife. In the west, young Valentinian III sat on the imperial throne, while real power rested in the hands of his mother, Galla Placidia, and the ambitious general Flavius Aetius. Aetius and Galla engaged in a relentless power struggle, each vying to outmaneuver the other. In a cunning move around 428 CE, Aetius orchestrated a plot against his rival Boniface, who governed North Africa. Falsely accused of treason, Boniface found himself ensnared in Aetius' web of deceit. Aetius manipulated Galla into summoning Boniface to answer charges, while simultaneously warning Boniface of Galla's alleged plans to execute him upon arrival. When Boniface hesitated, Aetius twisted it into evidence of treason. Procopius, the historian, suggests that in desperation, Boniface sought aid from the Vandals of Spain against a potential Roman invasion. However, Boniface's innocence became apparent to Galla, who realized he posed no threat. But amidst the chaos of Aetius and Galla's feud, Boniface might have seen Gazeric's Vandals as potential allies against his adversaries. Another narrative suggests that Gazeric, possibly incapacitated by a fall from his horse, sought to establish naval dominance, prompting him to invade North Africa to secure a base at Carthage. Scholars debate these accounts, but it's plausible that Gazeric seized the opportunity presented by Roman disarray and invaded to secure a prosperous homeland for his people, free from Visigothic interference. In 429 CE, Gazeric led a sizable force, either 80,000 or 20,000 Vandals and their allies, across the sea to North Africa. Scholar Walter A. Gofford underscores the significance of this migration, a pivotal event amidst the chaos of the Age of Invasions. If Boniface did indeed extend an invitation, Gazeric swiftly turned against his host, launching a campaign against the Imperial forces. Hippo, where Augustine served as bishop, fell to the Vandals after a grueling 14-month siege. Carthage soon followed, marking the beginning of a string of conquests. Gazeric's relentless advance left Rome reeling, desperate to reclaim its lost territories. For the next 15 years, the Romans waged a futile struggle to regain Africa, but it wasn't until after Gazeric's demise that they would succeed. With their stronghold in Carthage, the Vandals held sway over the Mediterranean, once Rome's domain. Gazeric's formidable navy prowled the seas, seizing ships and pillaging coastal settlements. Despite Roman attempts to dislodge them from North Africa, the Vandals remained entrenched, prompting Rome to acknowledge their kingdom as a legitimate power in 442 CE. In 455 CE, chaos engulfed Rome as Valentinian III fell victim to political intrigue, leading to the assassination of Flavius Aetius and Valentinian's subsequent murder by Petronius Maximus. Gazeric saw this as an opportunity to abrogate the Treaty of 442 CE which he claimed was valid only between himself and Valentinian. Seizing the moment, Gazeric set sail for Italy, unopposed, and descended upon Rome. Recognizing their military inadequacy, the Romans turned to Pope Leo I for diplomacy. With great courage, Leo ventured out to meet Gazeric, beseeching him to spare the city and its populace. Gazeric, mindful of the famine ravaging Italy and the formidable walls of Rome, agreed to plunder but not to destroy. The Vandals looted Rome, seizing riches and hostages, including Valentinian III's widow and daughters. Though the city suffered material loss, its architectural marvels remained intact, spared from wanton destruction. The sack of Rome in 455 CE sent shockwaves throughout the empire, highlighting the vulnerability of Italy to seaborne raids. Faced with the escalating threat posed by the Vandals, Rome marshaled its forces for a counterattack in 460 CE. However, Gazeric, ever vigilant, preempted the assault, decimating the Roman fleet. In 468 CE, the eastern and western halves of the empire united against the Vandals, only to suffer a devastating defeat at Gazeric's hands. Forced to sue for peace, Rome begrudgingly accepted Gazeric's terms, reaffirming the Treaty of 442 CE, effectively granting the Vandals free reign in the Mediterranean. After Gazeric's death in 478 CE, the once formidable Vandal kingdom began to wane. His son Hunneric ascended the throne, but his reign was marked by persecution of Trinitarian Christians within his realm. Upon his death in 484 CE, Hunneric was succeeded by his nephew Gunthamund, who sought to reconcile with the Trinitarians by recalling exiled Catholic bishops and clergy. Gunthamund's death in 496 CE, 
paved the way for Thracemen to assume power. Under his rule, the Vandals enjoyed a period of relative stability until his death in 523 CE. Hunneric's son, Hilderic, succeeded Thracemen, but the Vandal kingship suffered from a systemic flaw, a tradition of succession based on age rather than merit. Gazoric's succession system ensured stability, but led to aged rulers ill-equipped to address the kingdom's challenges. Hilderic, like his predecessors, faced difficulties managing the realm effectively due to his advanced age. Amidst internal strife, external threats loomed large. The Moors, emboldened, launched assaults on the Vandal territories, weakening their hold on North Africa. Hilderic's inability to repel these incursions further undermined his authority. Discontent simmered within Vandal ranks, particularly among those who adhered to Aryan Christianity, the prevailing faith of the Vandals. Gelimer, a nephew of Thracemund, grew disillusioned with Hilderic's rule, viewing his policies, especially his embrace of Trinitarian Christianity, as detrimental to Vandal interests. In a bid to restore the kingdom's former glory, Gelimer orchestrated a coup, imprisoning Hilderic and his family. Assuming the throne, Gelimer reinstated the persecution of Trinitarian Christians, mirroring the policies of Hunneric's reign. However, Gelimer's actions drew the ire of the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian I, a staunch Trinitarian. Justinian, seizing upon Gelimer's anti-Trinitarian stance, viewed it as an opportunity to intervene in North Africa. Justinian issued a stern ultimatum to Gelimer, demanding an end to the persecution of Trinitarians and the release of Hilderic. In defiance, Gelimer rebuffed Justinian's demands, asserting his sovereignty and autonomy. Justinian, seeing Gelimer's response as a pretext for intervention, resolved to reclaim North Africa, framing his campaign as a crusade to protect Trinitarian Christians. As tensions mounted, the stage was set for a climactic confrontation between the resurgent Eastern Roman Empire and the dwindling Vandal Kingdom. As Belisarius embarked on his campaign to reclaim North Africa, Gelimer, the Vandal King, remained oblivious to the imminent threat. Unaware of the Byzantine army's advance, Gelimer received word that they were just 10 miles from Carthage. In a bid to eliminate any potential rivals to his throne, Gelimer ordered the execution of Hilderic, the former king, and his supporters. Crafting a complex strategy, Gelimer devised a three-pronged attack to crush the invading Byzantine forces. However, his plan faltered due to poor coordination. Gelimer's brother, Amatis, struck prematurely and was swiftly defeated, while Jabiman's assault on the left flank met a similar fate at the hands of Belisarius' Hun cavalry. Arriving late to the fray, Gelimer discovered the battlefield strewn with corpses, including that of his fallen brother. Despite his numerical advantage, Gelimer's grief over Amatis' death paralyzed him, delaying his advance as he insisted on giving his brother a proper burial. Capitalizing on Gelimer's hesitation, Belisarius marched unopposed into Carthage, where he prepared to face the Vandal King's forces. Gelimer, in a bid to besiege Carthage, severed the aqueduct, cutting off the city's water supply and forcing Belisarius to confront him in open battle. The decisive clash occurred at Tricameron in December 533 CE. Belisarius, outnumbered but cunning, concealed his troop numbers and unleashed a devastating cavalry charge that shattered the Vandal lines. As Gelimer fled the battlefield in panic, his army crumbled in disarray. With Gelimer in flight, the Byzantine forces descended upon the deserted Vandal camp, claiming victory. Though Gelimer had the opportunity to regroup and launch a counterattack, his indecision cost him dearly. In the aftermath, Belisarius pursued Gelimer, who was eventually captured in March 534 CE and paraded in chains through Constantinople as part of Belisarius' triumph. The defeat marked the end of the Vandal Kingdom in North Africa. Survivors either assimilated into Roman society or scattered across Europe. The region plunged into chaos as conflicts between Trinitarian and Aryan Christians reignited, paving the way for Moorish incursions that ravaged the land. Justinian's victory over the Vandals restored North Africa to the Roman Empire, but came at a staggering cost in lives and resources.